So I'm here walking the streets of Seattle, speaking to people, asking them, what would they do if all of a sudden they didn't have access to fresh, clean drinking water? You know, I think, honestly, water is something we all need, and if you're desperate enough, I think as long as there was a place that you could physically get to, I think there wouldn't be a distance that I wouldn't go if it meant my, my survival and my family's survival. Okay. Um... Yeah, if, if you didn't have access to fresh water out of, the, out of the tap and if you couldn't buy bottled water, where would you get water from? I'd go up in do? the mountain and get it. Okay. How far would you go to get the water then? It doesn't matter. So you gotta get you, you gotta get the water regardless, right? Yeah. Huh? Cool. Well, me, I'll probably get mine out the toilet. <laughs> what would you do after the toilet runs out though? <laughs> if there the taps went dry, I don't have a good answer to that because I've been provided it my whole life. That's right. And I don't know what it's like to have to get water from a well or from a river. <laughs> I don't know what it's like. Um, I'd be screwed, basically. Yeah, we'd all be screwed. <laughs> I like to tell people a message to conserve the water because water is a precious element in, in, on earth and we need it here and we need that for the next generations, you know, we have to be treated as a beautiful treasure, the water, you know, we don't know what we're missing already and it's scary how the whole humanity is poisoning the rivers and all this forest. Yeah. You know, and it uh, makes me sad. So sad. I had no words. I'm chair of, a, of, a, of an organization called Water First. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've heard of them. Sure, yeah. sure. And their whole job is to really, you know, is to bring safe water to um, emerging markets like Bangladesh and Honduras and India. I mean, I know what happens there. It's hard to imagine it here, but I mean, what happens there is women walk, you know, for eight hours a day to get water. With, with water, giant jerry cans, With big right? and huge pots on their head. And we did an event here to simulate it. So last spring, um, and we're going to do it again this spring, we did something called Carry Five, where all of us basically went to Seward Park and simulated carrying five, you know, five gallons of water, however we wanted to carry it. And we could distribute it, which a lot of the women and the emerging markets can, but we, we carried that for, for um, you know, five, a 5K walk and uh, tried to experience what that felt like. But that's the life of women and girls around the developing world, isn't it? Yes, it is. And um, it's one major reason that girls can't get educated and there aren't secondary industries for women. In this country, obviously, we're, we expect clean water as, like a, uh, as a right. Uh, and not just a privilege in other countries around the world where there are not infrastructure to support people in gathering clean water. It's a different scenario entirely. It's really difficult for me to comprehend since I live in the land of abundance. If you had to sort of make a choice between, between like, this and nothing at all, right? I think you'd be forced to do this. I mean, you need to have the fluids. Unless there's other sources of liquid that you can give them, but I don't think you'd have a choice. I'd certainly want to find out what's in here before I did it, though. Is that, you know, it starts with clean, clean, safe water, but the secondary benefits of that translate far downstream, you know, in the economy and um, girls' education and, uh, of course, safety and hygiene and, you know, get rid of diseases. And <laughs> Can I go philosophical? Yeah. We're right next to some water here. If it came down to it, would you drink that water? No. What do you think about the fact that some people do drink water like that? Or oh, yes. Worse? Yeah. Well, when you get desperate, you do things you normally wouldn't have to do. I guess if there was no fresh water coming out of the tap, I would uh, drill a well. Because okay. I'm from Nebraska, where that's what we used to do. Excellent. Or. I would buy it at the store where they had a processing plant that could clean it up and put it in. But um, it would be a problem, right? It would right. be a major issue. And what if you didn't have the resources to drill a well or, yeah. or buy clean water from the store? What would you do then? Uh, yeah, we'd have a problem. It would be the end of life, right? I don't think it would be a pretty thing. So um, I don't know what I'd do. Where would I get water? Yeah. I'd stop drinking. You'd stop drinking. But, what would, but the end result of stopping drinking water is... Uh, just have to drink more vodka, I guess. <laughs> if my taps were shut off, and I did, I would drive 
to uh, the base of Snoqualmie Pass, which is close, and take uh, probably five gallon jugs with me. Yep. And uh, get some of the runoff of the springs up there. Yep. Uh, and then boil the water when I got home to take out any parasites that might be in there. Yep. And then, uh, then uh, put it back in the containers after I've cleaned them. And then what I would do is uh, I'd probably do that every two days. Yep. That's just for drinking water. Right. Okay. Now you got to bathe. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, of a challenge there because I love the, wa the, the warm water. Cool. Well, if, uh, if you're thirsty, you'd walk as far as you need to until you find water. Well, clean water is an extremely important thing. Water, our, you know, our bodies are made up almost entirely, well not entirely, of water. 70%? 70%. Um, yeah. And you know, if I didn't have clean water, um, that'd be pretty bad, you know. You need it to survive. You'd be very thirsty. You'd be very thirsty. You need it to make your food. Um, and if it wasn't available, like, I would probably do anything in my power to find some available clean water. Well, if I t or, you know, because you can't, because, like, if you drink water that's bad for you, you're going to get sick. It's going right. to make you worse. I mean, having to go to get water every couple of days. It'd be a hassle. It would be a hassle. It would be a hassle. Uh, it's something that I wouldn't like, uh, so I'd probably send my wife. <laughs> Because she doesn't work. There you go. Okay. So At least she doesn't work so outside of the home. Outside, there you go. There, you, you kept me from getting in trouble. She cool. doesn't work outside the home. So she could go slip some water jugs up to the mountains. What you do without water, it's something that we take for granted so much. You know, you walk over to the sink and you turn on the water and it's right there. It's always there. You don't have to worry about it. I probably wouldn't shower as much. And I definitely wouldn't drink as much water. Um, plus, it would be kind of hard to keep product up being a flower shop. Um, fresh water is pretty important for the product to stay fresh and healthy, so it'd be pretty difficult. Um, I'd have to definitely make some life adjustments. So if you had a choice between water for your flowers and water for yourself or your family, where, what would you do? I, I don't know. I think I might actually choose water for the flowers over water for myself and my family. Um. Real change is a thing that helps people that are disabled, homeless, and it helps you get on your feet. And it, it's a good program for people that are willing to be honest and change their lives. Find the, the cleanest creek with water in it. How far would you walk for that? Uh, I would walk a mile for a camel. How's that? What would you do? All of a sudden, you don't have access to clean drinking water. I would go up to the mountains and the rivers. Cool. How often would you do that? I would do it, uh, I would fill up my jugs and I would do it after every two days. Every couple of days? Yeah. Um, now, sometimes the water that comes from the mountains isn't always clean. And that's fine. That's fine. But it's better than the tap water that's in the city. <laughs> okay. Jesus said, I am the living water, and those who come to me will never go thirsty. I drink of the uncreated God, <laughs> and I'd probably die if there wasn't water, though, and so I'm really happy we have clean water in America, and so on an unphilosophical note, we should definitely support clean water in, in places where there isn't clean water. <laughs> The Trustable Movement leverages the power of social media for the good of humanity. This is a different way of connecting people instantaneously through multiple platforms to do common good. I hope everyone is able to join me and everyone else at Trustable.